Did you listen to the debate on harmonic motion? It was just a lot of back and forth. Oh, God. So we're going to talk about simple harmonic motion basics. I mean basic as in bass, as in really important here. So first of all, SHM. That's why we often just uh, call it SHM for short, simple harmonic motion. So I'm going to talk about this definition in a second right here. So I'm going to maybe put this right here around because this is something you could absolutely easily be asked on an exam. So make sure you know this. Now, before we go into detail into this one, I just want to discuss what uh, simple harmonic motion actually can be. So a common example is a pendulum that's swinging back and forth. It could also be, for example, a mass with, you know, a spring to left of it, a spring to the right of it. And this mass is on a, you know, a frictionless surface, let's say, and it's oscillating back and forth. Each of these, uh, these are very, very common examples here. So these common ones are here. That's like I said, is a pendulum swinging, mass attached to a spring. Okay. So what do we mean by these two things? Well, first we say the acceleration acts in opposite direction to the displacement. What does that mean? Well, that means if I take my pendulum, for example, I displace it to the right. Well, that means that there's going to be an acceleration to the left in opposite direction. Now, remember what causes an acceleration? It turns out it's an unbalanced force. So there's a restoring force, really. And in this, in this case right here, it's due to gravity. It's the, you know, there's a component of gravity that's uh, the force of gravity that's making it go to the left. So if you displace it to the right, the force goes to the left, and therefore the acceleration is on the left. Now, if you displace it to the left, well, then the acceleration slash force is going to be to the right. So it's always opposite. Same here, right, with this mass. If I displace it to the right, well, the springs are going to be such that they want to, you know, move it to the left. And if I displace it to the left, the springs are going to want to make it move to the right. So do you understand number two, then? It's their opposite in direction. And this one here, the acceleration is proportional to displacement. That just means that the more I push it to the right, the more force there is, and therefore acceleration. So if I, you know, move it, uh, you know, five units to the right, well, then the acceleration is five units as well. So we can summarize this really by uh, an important equation, and it's it's essentially when I think about simple harmonic motion, I just think about this equation right here. So acceleration is proportional to negative x. This is the piece that combine that sort of explains this. So why is that? Well, A is proportional to X. Oh, that's the first one. And the fact that there's an opposite direction, that's the negative from this. Now, what does it mean uh, for an equation like this? This just means that there e exists an equation that goes A equals minus something times X. Now, we're going to learn in the next uh, video I'm going to do that uh, this something is going to be, turns out, it's minus, it's going to be omega squared X. But the key thing is just A is proportional to minus uh, some uh, proportional to minus x. So what does it mean for something to be proportional? Well, that means it's going to be linear if we do x on the x-axis and acceleration on the y-axis. This is going to be a linear graph. And this graph then is going to go like this. It's going to be something that, you know, it's a straight line. It's going to pass through the origin. I'm going to try to draw it like this right here. Something like this. Okay, so again, you can see it as, as I move it to the right with x, let's say I move it to the right a few units, well, it goes down by the same number of units you went right. And the fact that you went, instead of going right and up, that would have been if uh, number two wasn't the case. So this is a visual representation of this equation, which is the definition of simple harmonic motion. Now, let's consider energy in simple harmonic motion, and we'll consider like a mass, we'll just zoom into this one right here. So we have a mass on a frictionless surface, it's free to go left and right like this. Now, we're going to define something right here. Maybe I'll do it as a dotted line right here. I'll call it the equilibrium. So that means that as this mass, keep in mind, this is a dynamic thing. This mass is going left and right and left and right and left and right like this. We'll assume it's frictionless so uh, and there's no losses in the springs. It's just going to go left and right forever. Well, if we consider like the middle of it, that's the equilibrium. If I leave it long enough, uh, if there was friction, it would stop there. Um, maybe over here, then I could call this like the maximum displacement. And by the way, this is symmetric, so there'll also be one on the left. But let's just focus on one of these. So I'll call this max displacement. Now, sometimes that's also called the amplitude. So then let's see what happens. Well, at the equilibrium position, we're going to define that as x equals 0. So x is our displacement from equilibrium. Over here now, we'll say x equals max. Now, 
on the left side, it's also x equals a maximum displacement. Of course, it's a negative, but it's still at a maximum displacement. It's going to be going to the right, then to the left, then to the right, to the left. Well, if we have x equals 0, we can actually talk about the potential energy. And maybe I'll do the potential energy, maybe I'll do it in red, let's say. So E, P, let's just say. What would the potential energy be? Well, if there's no displacement, remember potential energy is related to the displacement times, uh, well, it's related to the displacement and the spring constant. But if there's no displacement, that means E, P must be 0. And over here, if there's a maximum displacement, well, then the potential energy must be at a maximum. Now, I don't know the values of these. It actually doesn't matter. I just know it's at a maximum. Now, let's talk about what else is happening here. Let's talk about the speed, maybe. So over here, for example, at the right, as it's going to the right right here, it actually stops technically as it goes to the left. So we can say V here equals 0. Well, by uh, contrast over here, then this must be a maximum. So as it's passing through this middle point right here, so as it goes over here, it's going maximum speed, then it slows down to zero, then it goes maximum speed here, then it slows down to zero, and so on. And if we consider kinetic energy then, well, that would be EK. EK then, if uh, remember, EK is half mv squared, so if the V is a max, then this must be a maximum. And if the speed is zero, well, then EK here must be zero. So these are the key things, and if you really just understand this right here really well, then uh, most of simple harmonic motion is actually quite, dare I say it, simple. So let's look at these graphs, and let's look at how energy uh, depends on the position here, on the displacement. So let's just say, uh, if we're displacing this thing, you know, right, then left, then right, do you notice that my displacement could be up to some number? Then it's zero, and it goes to some negative number, but it never goes past it, it never goes past it. So that means I'm going to be sort of bound by some sort of, you know, some sort of limit here. So I don't know what it'll be, but there'll be some sort of boundaries here uh, past which it won't go. It won't go to the left of this, it won't go to the right of this. Okay, well then what's actually going to happen here? This one right here, um, if I consider the kinetic energy, maybe we'll just do that one in blue. So the kinetic energy, if we follow this right here, at x equals zero, ek is a maximum. So that means when x equals zero, I'll make my kinetic energy a maximum here. And I know that when I have my maximum uh, displacement, my kinetic energy is zero. So that means that maximum here, it's zero. And over here, it's also a zero. And that means then I can make myself a nice smooth curve that passes through these points. Okay, so I'll label that one uh, EK. That's this blue curve. Now, uh, in the same way, well, what about the potential energy? The potential energy when x equals zero, the potential energy was zero. So that means over here, it's zero. And at maximum displacement, potential energy was at a maximum. So that means it's going to be like this. And over here, then, it's also going to be at a maximum. So it's symmetric, and I'll make myself a nice curve that goes like this. Okay, so that one I'm going to label EP, you know, for my potential energy. That's this curve, this red one here. And now, do you remember the equation? We also have an equation that, you know, total energy. Remember, that just equals EK plus EP. So I could also draw myself that. So that means maybe I'll do that in green or something. So let's just say, so that means at this point, well, 0 plus whatever this unit is, is just this. And over here, let's just say over here, well, you know, half plus a half is also this. And it's also 0 plus 1 is also this. In other words, I'm going to be drawing myself a straight, flat line that goes across like this right here. So there we go, and I'm going to call that ET, the total energy. There we go, I've got my energetics uh, as far as the displacement is concerned. Now I can also do the same idea, but this time with time being on the right. If this thing's going back and forth, we first, it's really important to just consider when are we counting our uh, t equals zero. Are we counting it, are we starting the timer basically in the middle, or are we starting the timer at a maximum? Well, if we decide that uh, t equals zero, x equals x zero, now let me define that. I'm going to say that that is at this max displacement here. We're going to call that equals x zero. Okay, this right here, that's going to be this piece right here. So at that point right here, at time t equals zero, we're going to consider we're at maximum displacement. If that's the case, then a graph then, remember, if we're at maximum displacement, what does that mean? Well, that means the kinetic energy will be zero at this point. And the kinetic energy then will just kind of go, it'll just be a nice sine curve that just goes up and down and up and down. So it's just going to go like this. So, I don't know, something like this. I'm not perfect at drawing these things, but I hope you understand the idea here. So over time, it'll do just like this, and it goes on forever, assuming there's no friction, no you know, resistive forces. So we'll call that EK. And of course, the potential energy will be the opposite, right? So over here, the potential energy is at a maximum, so that means it'll be something like this. So it'll go something like 
No, I'm just trying to draw it like this here, do opposites, because that's what it does. Let's see how well I do. Yeah, it's not too bad. I think we understand the idea here. So this right here is going to be E P. And just like before, the total energy then will be some green line that goes all the way across, something like this. If I drew it right, you know, it would touch all the tops. Of course, I didn't draw it perfectly because I'm not a perfect artist, but you understand the idea. So this is the total energy. And again, that's just E K plus E P. So this is how we can draw the energies, okay? So it's really important to consider, well, which are we asking for? Are we asking for uh, energies with respect to the displacement, or do we want energy with respect to the time? Those are the key questions to ask. But if you understand this situation right here, then you're all set for simple harmonic motion.